in terms of using binomial theorem. Applications of this would be things like, could you take x plus 2 over x squared to the 100th power? And we could take this and say that, okay, this is going to be equal to uh, x to the 100 and then 2 over x squared to the 0. And so this would be 100 choose 0, or this would be 100 choose 1, and then x to the 99th, and then 2 over x squared to the first, and then plus 100 choose 2, x to the 98th, and then 2 over x squared to the second. Now we would go plus. Eventually any of these middle terms look like a 100 choose j, x to the jth power, whoops, sorry, 100 minus j and then 2 over x squared to the j, and then we keep on going down until we get 100, choose 100, and then x to the 0, and then 2 over x squared to the 100th power. And what you would do with you know problems of this nature is, well, one, can you just simply write it out correctly, a direct writing of uh, the binomial theorem, which is what you see right here. Another is to kind of go through here and say, could you figure out uh, particular, like if I asked for the, say, I want the 13th term. Well, the first term, the very first term has that as a zero. The second term has a one. The third term has a two. So that would tell me that the 13th term is going to be a x and a 2 over x squared. This would be to the 12th term. Now the sum of these two, that's a, this will be 100 minus 12, which is going to be 88. And so this would be 100 choose 12. And you could simplify it and you would get things like, okay, this is 100 factorial over 88 factorial, 12 factorial, x to the 88th power, and then 2 to the 12th power divided by x to the 24th power equals, you know, do some simplification on this particular term until I get some particular formula for x. Other examples would be, could you give a formula for the x to the k? And so what I'm asking now is not x to the j, but if I would simplify these all things. And so the way you would do that is you would take the, the j. So if we would simply say, okay, if this is a j, the jth would be 100 choose j, and this would be x to the 100 minus j divided by 2 over x squared to the j. And that particular thing is going to be so we would have a 2 to the j power, a 100, let's leave it as a choice, 100 choose j, but now we have a 100x to the 100 minus j, and this is 1 over x to the 2j, that's well, minus, so this would be minus 3j, and so this would be the j. So the j looks like this, and so what I'm asking for is x to the k, so this thing would have to be some sort of 2 to the j times 100 over j over x to the k. And so the problem with this is um, for some values, this will only, at k has to be an integer if we would do this. And so we would do things like, okay, uh, when, you know, I have to have some sort of k thing going on here. So this would be some sort of function of k involved here and how would I make this thing out and so the way you would just do this equals to say something next to the j so I would say all right I'm just going to call that k so if I let 100 minus 3j equal to k well that tells me that I want to get rid of all of my j's and so to do that just solve for it 
And so we would have 100 minus k divided by 3 has to be equal to j. Now, this also tells us that because j is an integer, we know that because, well, that's what we used, right? We had, you know, choose 0, choose 1, choose 2. That's what That was our j's as we were going through here. And so because it's an integer, that tells me that 100 minus k over 3 um, has to be an int. So that would tell me that I'm only allowed to pick, you know, if this is not true, then the co the, my problem is, is that I would make that coefficient zero. And so that's what we would do here. If, if three divides that, we would have it. And so then what happens is that's just all of my j's. And so the k looks like two to the j, which is actually 100 minus k over three. And then 100 choose j, which is 100 minus k over 3. And then I would have x to the k. And this happens This happens if 3 divides 100 minus k. On the other hand, it's just simply 0 times x to the k if 3 does not divide 100 minus k. And so we could write it out like this, which, I don't know, it's not any prettier, but it does get us a, a close solution to talk about polynomials of particular forms. And you'll notice that if I write this thing as a polynomial, what's happening is it starts off as x to the 100, and then it goes down by 3. In other words, what this polynomial does is this is an x to 100, this would be an x to the 97, this would be x to the 94. Well, if this is x to the 100, and this is x to the 97, where's x to the 99? Where's my two terms? There's 0 x to the 99 plus 0 x to the 98, and then I'll have a 97, and then there'll be 0 x to the... And so what happens if you simplify these terms? Certain x's will have will never show up, which means our coefficient is 0, which is where that comes from. So the applications of can you plug things in appropriately to the binomial theorem? Could you spit out particular portions of the binomial theorem? Could you interpret what they mean in terms of the binomial theorem? And then also be able to use Pascal's triangle. This, you know, the Fibonacci numbers was just something to be interested in and be able to work with those. All right, so that's the end of chapter six.